Good evening and welcome to live coverage of the Labour Party conference, which has been taking place in Dublin today. Shortly, the delegates gathered here at the Helix in Dublin City University will hear from the Labour leader, Ivana Bacic. Right now at the podium is Labour's Dublin candidate for the European election, Aon O'Reardon. A woman who is more passionate and ambitious for the cause of decency and equality than anyone I have ever known. The woman who has done more to drag this country out of the dark ages than any other. A feminist, a socialist, a true Republican. She is first and foremost a friend, loyal and true. There is no kinder, warmer and more generous person than Ivana in Irish politics today. We all know that. She's a hero of mine and I know of yours too. To know her is to love her. We now live in a complicated world. The challenges we face are enormous. This isn't the time for lightweights. We need leaders. Ireland needs Ivana Bacic. Someone who is the difference between winning and losing. Someone with the courage and determination to keep social justice on the agenda. Someone who will always, always take risks for progress. A woman who sees wrong and will not rest until it is put to right. A leader not a follower. Dinna inspirajuk, kroga, lock, kyaun dana, a ta diraha er hail, gok dinna in air in ausu. A great Irish leader when we need one most. That's the Ivana I know. Please welcome Ivana Bacic TD, leader of the Labour Party. It's almost two years to the day since she became Labour leader. After what has been an exceptional week in Irish politics, Van Bacic will doubtless be keen to put the focus on Labour's policies and candidates in the run-up to June's local and European elections. Gurumahagoyev uh, Akarja, friends and comrades, thank you very much for that lovely welcome. And I want to thank my good friend Aon for those kind and generous words. I know you agree with me, he will make an incredible MEP for Dublin. Now, now as a football fanatic, I'm sure Aon would love to be at Lansdowne Road right now, and I'd be there myself, but tonight we have important work to do. Across Ireland and across Europe, many want to sow division and distrust. But our mission in Labour is to deliver positive change, to build an Ireland that works for all. Comrades, elections over the next 12 months will shape the future of our country. They say a week is a long time in politics. Well, never was that more true than this week. And on a personal note, I want to wish Leo Varadkar well on his decision. I think we all acknowledge politics can take a toll, but it is how we achieve change. And colleagues, for those of you who don't know me, I want to share with you a personal story that has shaped my life. My Czech grandfather, Charles Bacic, sought refuge in Ireland nearly 80 years ago with his young family. I think of his experience and how much he contributed to Waterford Crystal and to Ireland. My grandfather's story and the story of so many migrants who have done so much for our country confirms our need to show solidarity with those who seek refuge here now. Solidarity with those sleeping in tents on Mount Street tonight. <clears throat> solidarity with the tens of thousands of Ukrainians fleeing Russia's brutal invasion and war. Our sense of solidarity. It's why Irish people are such a strong voice in condemning Israel's genocide in Gaza. <clears throat> and, and colleagues, as famine takes hold and the relentless killing of Palestinians continues, we need the release of all hostages and a permanent ceasefire. And, 
And we in Labour believe that now is the time for Ireland to break diplomatic and trade links with Israel. Conference, when we see what's happening in Europe, it must strengthen our resolve to elect socialist group MEPs. Too many of the voices in Brussels now do not represent our values. Fine Gael's European party engages in climate change denial. Their leader, Ursula von der Leyen, tacitly endorses the apartheid policies of Netanyahu's government. And meanwhile, Irish MEPs in Sinn Féin's grouping vote against nature restoration laws and tacitly endorse Putin's brutal regime in Russia. So we must have change. We must return Labour voices for Europe in June. And and colleagues, if you want a just transition for a sustainable economy, an EU-wide plan for affordable housing, MEPs who will stand firm against the far right, and European solidarity with the people of Gaza and of Ukraine, if you want candidates who will stand for equality, solidarity and fairness, then I'm asking you to vote for Aon O'Reardon in Dublin and Niamh Horrigan in Ireland South. Conference, you may know how I first got into politics, some years ago now. As a student activist, I faced prison and bankruptcy for providing women with information on abortion. It took us many years after that to repeal the Eighth Amendment, but we did. Change is never easy. It takes courage and it takes dedication. It takes commitment from activists, like the many I see here tonight. And we need your activism. We need that courage and commitment to resolve the challenges our society faces. To deliver homes, to protect workers, to tackle climate change, and to provide care and support when we need it. That's our Labour vision, and it's needed now more than ever. The Because, as we know, for far too many people, Ireland is simply not working. No matter how much Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil try to speak the language of equality, they're fooling no one. Their failing government is more interested in shortcuts or gimmicks. Didn't we see it just two weeks ago? Government members who said one thing but did another and only admitted it after the result. Conference. The far right is jubilant and on the rise across the country. They seek to target the most vulnerable, and this government is letting them away with it. This government has no plan to put in place the support and the shelter that is needed for refugees who are left out in the cold while we see vacant buildings lying empty. By contrast, we in Labour have a clear plan a plan to end direct provision and to deliver a fair and effective policy on migration, rooted in our values and our experience as a land of emigrants. That's our Labour vision. <clears throat> it's more than a vision for us. Across the country, I am so proud of our members and our representatives working with local communities to support those who need our help because our campaigns are rooted in our communities. And like you, I am a community activist. I've campaigned to get new multi-denominational schools opened and to set up local refugee welcome groups. Like you, like all of us, I am fighting for more homes, for better services, for more school places, for playgrounds, for parks and for sports pitches. And I'm proud of our work. Our communities need us. Labour activists and Labour public representatives who have the commitment to make change. Because, colleagues, our party knows how to make change happen. We are doers, not bystanders, not commentators. 
Our councillors and our candidates are the backbone of our party. You are our shop stewards in our great collective endeavour. And here tonight, we're joined by nearly 100 Labour candidates for the local elections, with more still to be selected. And I'm asking you at home to give our Labour candidates your support and your number one vote in June. You know Labour candidates are working hard to deliver change for you across the country. And when elected, your Labour councillors will support public housing and will support good planning. We will support active travel schemes and the delivery of decent civic amenities. But this government continues to strip powers away from your local councils. Labour would overturn that. We would reform local government so that more of the decisions that affect you are made locally. That's our Labour vision. Conference, our country faces huge challenges. After eight years of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil rule, give or take the Greens, the housing crisis is worse than ever. With over 4,000 children homeless, a shameful record. With record rents, with unaffordable homes. We know food and energy prices are breaking the bank every month. And the chaos in emergency departments means sick people are afraid to go to hospital. So working people are caught in a triple bind, fighting for creche places and school places, for autism assessments and therapies for their children, fighting for home help hours or medical appointments for their own parents, and all the while trying to cover the cost of the mortgage or rent, the electricity bill or the big food shop. We know that nobody wants that struggle for themselves, and most of all, no parent wants that for our children. Far too many young people still living at home with their parents, stuck in arrested development, or stuck in a rental trap, paying off someone else's mortgage, unable to save for one of their own. Young couples even delaying having their own children because of the housing crisis. This is the reality of modern Ireland. No security, no certainty, a new precariat. Our country, which has come so far in so many ways, is now losing some of our best people. And who could blame younger generations for looking beyond these shores? Colleagues, this is the tragedy of Ponzi scheme politics. We keep hearing that the budget books are good, that resources aren't an issue. But the problem is, we have government parties which do not believe in the power of the state. <clears throat> and, and the problem is, we have ministers in government who are out of touch, who have lost control or have left their jobs. Focused on internal leadership contests, they want to do anything but govern. And what are their solutions? Reliance on the private sector, a tax break here or a one-off grant there. What good are these for a homeless family, for a patient on a trolley or a child waiting for a CAMS appointment? The government has made a pyramid scheme of our basic needs. They are giving people a trickle of their taxes back to pay for non-existent services the state should have provided in the first place. So people want radical change, not cosmetic change. The Taoiseach's resignation last week is the ultimate vote of no confidence in his own government. <clears throat> I do personally wish Simon Harris well, but my challenge to the man who will be the new temporary Taoiseach is this. If he has confidence in this government, then he should call a general election now. <clears throat> because we should let the people decide on the radical change that is needed. The housing disaster, the civil rights issue of our generation, we all know this. 
and building homes will be our number one priority in government. Last year, I said that we need an ambition for one million homes over a decade. That's 50,000 new builds and 50,000 deep retrofits per year over 10 years. Yeah. Because this recognises the real scale of the chronic need for housing and the need to meet our climate targets. And we can find enough construction workers to deliver on both. But this government won't even pay apprentices the minimum wage, let alone mount a proactive recruitment campaign. The government attacks our ambition on housing, but they have no answers when the experts agree with us, and they do. Two weeks ago, we put forward our Labour housing plan in the door, but the government couldn't even muster their own ideas to oppose it. So, to tackle the housing crisis, Labour would regulate short-term lettings. We would make homes from the vacant and derelict buildings which blight every town and village in this country and we would protect renters through reinstating an evidence-based ban on no-fault evictions. <laughs> and we would increase funding for adaptation grants, provide dedicated housing for older people and people with disabilities, and we would transform the Land Development Agency into a state construction company to build and deliver the homes we need. <clears throat> these, these are our red lines for government, because we know that we will never solve the supply and affordability housing crisis with subsidies to developers. It's time for stronger state action, action that this government cannot be trusted to deliver. Conference, we know that this government cannot be trusted either to deliver on workers' rights. We see far too many workers in precarious jobs, far too many on low pay who need a pay rise. We must end the scandal of, bo of bogus self-employment and protect the rights of vulnerable workers in the gig economy. We must introduce reproductive health leave for women at work. And we must ensure that workers can benefit from artificial intelligence rather than being displaced by an algorithm. Labour in government, as the party of the trade union movement, would tackle low pay. We would use public procurement to lift wages and we would deliver a right to organise at work. <clears throat> Because, because as proud trade unionists, we know that united we stand, divided we beg. And that's our commitment to deliver on workers. We must raise incomes while tackling the cost of living. And colleagues, right now, Ireland has the highest household electricity prices in the EU, while we see fossil fuel companies making record profits. So as part of our climate plans, Labour would focus on how we can cut the cost of electricity for families and for small businesses down to the EU average. This would save families up to 700 euro per year. Our mission in government will be to make the just transition real for people impacted by climate change. That means a stronger state role in ramping up renewal, renewable energy. It means targeted grants for home retrofits so that everyone can afford to upgrade their homes. It means accessible and affordable public transport. It means vastly enhanced cycling and walking infrastructure. It means a bike to school incentive scheme, safer streets and limits on SUVs. We stand... We st I know we all agree on that. We stand for clean air, for reduced emissions, for thriving communities and for better public health. Because we know that our world is on red alert and running out of time. 
Our planet needs action now for us and for future generations. Just as we need action now for every generation on care and on childcare, Labour has clear policy. We would deliver a Niamh Vranach moment with a guaranteed preschool place for every child. And we would introduce a new fair deal scheme to support older people to remain living at home because so many people are terrified of ending up in an overcrowded emergency department like in Limerick or in Cork. To deliver on the promise of Slauncher Care, Labour's commitment is to complete the rollout of free GP care that we started. Uh, to we would commit to lift the HSE recruitment embargo and to reverse the privatisation of healthcare. <laughs> and further, we commit to recognising the true value of care work in our society through decent pay and conditions for carers. <laughs> Conference, we respect the results of the referendums on family and on care. But if they had one clear message, it is that the state must do more to realise the rights of disabled people. That means, that means scrapping the green paper, investing in supports and ratifying the optional protocol. Nothing less... nothing less than a new bill of disability rights. And our reforms will not stop there. Labour is committed to ending child poverty and in government we would ensure that social protection payments are automatically increased in line with inflation, long overdue. Colleagues, we would tackle the harms caused by criminalising people in addiction by repealing Section 3 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. And we would legislate for assisted dying. We would deliver on our vision for, of a community model for policing with more Gardaí on our streets. And colleagues, we stand also for a truly free education system with enough school places for all children where church and state are separated. <laughs> but conference, to do all this, to deliver on our labour programme for change, we need a strong, sustainable economy. You know you can trust Labour to create jobs, to support investment, because we have a track record of delivering growth, not just for the sake of a budget surplus, rather to achieve our vision for an Ireland that works for all. And also so that we can plan for the future, a future that will include a unity referendum on our island. This will be a monumental task, to be approached with an open and generous mindset. And Labour has outlined how we would prepare for a united Ireland. That work must start in the next government with a dedicated department to undertake the necessary detailed work of reconciliation, integration and unity planning. conference, this is our Labour programme for change. We have the courage to believe that we can change our society. And we'll be fighting every day between now and the 7th of June so that Labour representatives are in all the rooms where decisions are made, at local council chambers and in the European Parliament too. The stakes are high. Our communities need effective representation on housing, on workers' rights, on climate and on care. Hard work, 
trust in our principles and collective endeavour. That's the future of social democracy. It is the future for Ireland, and it always has been. Colleagues, we are the party of deep roots and of green shoots. A party of political passion, of conviction, of integrity and of courage. We are strong when we work together. Ninyart Gokur Lechela. So all these things are possible. But building homes takes labour. Staffing hospitals takes labour. Tackling the climate crisis, that takes labour too. Comrades, let us rise. If you believe in our vision, join us. Work with us. Vote Labour for an Ireland that works for all. Gura Mahagwerth. A standing ovation there for leader of the Labour Party, Ivana Bacic, in a speech in which she called for an immediate general election. She said building homes would be her party's number one priority in government. She said Labour would regulate short-term lets, protect renters and transform the Land Development Agency. And she described these as Labour's red lines for government. That's all from our coverage of the Labour Party conference at the Helix in DCU. From Dublin, good evening. <laughs>